Culver Bible, Book 6, Book of Morals and Precepts, Chapter 49, Officials. Much of the book is to develop your moral code. Avoid using it to judge others. NPR, 4913. Let your arm be ever ready to guard the unprotected. Ease the plight of the destitute and turn not your face from the misery of the hungry. If you turn a hungry man away, unsatisfied, and he still to satisfy the craving within his belly, how can you, who are well fed, judge him? NPR 4914 The good official upholds the statutes of the land with one arm and supports the widow and orphan with the other. He defends the afflicted against the weaklings who oppose them. NPR 4915 He interprets the statute with indifference to the estate and titles of any man. When in his presence all men become equal in rights. He safeguards all that men enjoy. His sympathies are with the lowly and oppressed, and his hand falls heavily on the wrongdoer. NPR 4916 It is not sufficient to punish the wrongdoer. You must seek out the cause of his wrongdoing. It may be committed willfully or in ignorance, or because of the oppression of circumstances. Punishment cannot be meted equally to all men. NPR 4919 The highest form of justice on earth is the redress of human injustice, but where is the administrator sufficiently capable? All good things, but in the hands of an arrogant person it could do damage. God attempts to teach consequences to those that want help and should get it, but they must want it and be ready to do what is necessary to change their own life. Unfortunately, they often like a certain aspect of your life. Think they can just appropriate it, but will not give up the things that are actually why your life is different from theirs. You can't help them if they have no intention of changing or acknowledging what they've been happy with has got to change. You should remember your own actions could create more problems than not, and it often damages you. It would be wise to understand you cannot always do good by doing what you wish you could or hope to. Free will must be tamed, not crushed, and the more power you hand to government. Or you usurp yourself. It could force rebellion. Much bad has been done in the name of good, and few that cry for the greater good will be remembered kindly after they leave Earth. I'm unaware of anybody that was so arrogant that they hurt other people they're usually not remembered very kindly it's not always easy to realize sometimes the only thing you can do is nothing the doctor's oath first do no harm be aware of your actions think before you act of the impact on you and society be prepared to own the consequences and show humility in all you do the verse no arrogant person will point to is verse 16 it is the only bit of humility in the four verses, and the most important. It is not enough to punish. You must seek out the cause. Be prepared. The cause could be your own actions. Something that is pointed to in the other four verses. 13. Ends with a warning. If you turn away the hungry, how can you blame them for stealing? Verse 14 concerns me because who defines a weakling, or for that matter, the afflicted? could be afflicted by government or you. Be self-aware of what you are doing, the repercussions of your actions. Verse 15, who decides right and wrong? You do. The first part says judge impartially. We are flawed. You have power and should not be blind to the repercussions of doing the wrong thing in arrogance. Remember, government is not the only ones that could be the wrongdoer. Verse 16 only makes those small references clear. Separate the arrogant could forget. They could be the ones inflicting the harm. 